everyone, this is Mike Check 95 back with another Top 10 Movies that I reviewed in 2022. I reviewed the Top 10 Bad Films, it is now time to talk about the films that, that were quite awful, but they didn't really hit the mark. The films that I like to call the meh. So, to kind of get go straight forward into it, here we go. Number 10 on the list would have to go to The Crazies. I actually really enjoy this film for what it is. It's actually a pretty entertaining watch. It's just, it kind of, to me, if I, now that I really think about it, it kind of does feel like it's a copy and paste of an old TV series, which it is an old TV series. It does have that TV series feel. It has a lot of the typical stereotypes when it comes to the era that it was released. And, like, it never really hit a special spot in my heart when I watched this film. Again, it's not bad. It's pretty decent. It's just... I wouldn't be mad if I missed it again. Number nine goes to Apostle. Now, this film is pretty... It's, it's good for what it is. But, I have a certain time era when it comes to uh, media and, like, projects that I don't really have a certain strong liking to and a lot of it is not really the way people portray it it's not really their fault it's just like personal stuff in the past that in my life that's happened that was kind of forced upon me i just kind of feel like that this film wasn't really a big hit with me because of the time era that it's in and everything a lot of these supernatural uh elements are actually pretty cool in this film and just the the story itself is kind of interesting it's just, for me, it's just the time era. Like, I am not a big fan of where the, the setting of this film is taking place. And that's just my main reason why I don't like this film. Number eight goes to Gremlins 2, the new batch. A lot of this is the pacing of the film. Really good pacing, and then it just stalls. Good pacing, and then it just stalls. Like, it really has no direction when it comes to the pacing of, of the film. It stays in one location. It tells a pretty okay story. It's very similar to the first film. I just don't know why they chose with the direction of stalling the pacing of the film every 15 minutes. Because I felt like I was stuck watching this film for three hours. It hurts the viewers one time for them watching this film. Number seven goes to Uncharted. Now, I know that there's a lot of people out there that actually really enjoy this film and think it's a really good movie. I am gonna be on the other side of the spectrum and say that this film is actually not that great. It's not, this is probably one of the very few films on this list of kind of meh films that I will probably not watch again. I want to say a lot of it is because of my biased opinion when it comes to the Uncharted uh, mythology and the Uncharted games, but I feel like they did the Uncharted series wrong with this film. I already know it's going to get a sequel because of the amount of money this film made and how much the people like this movie, but I really don't think this film has anything special to deliver when it comes to a viewing perspective for me. Like it. I feel like it kind of ruined the Uncharted legacy altogether. Like, there's elements in this film that are put in there just for fan service that shouldn't have happened in a first story arc because it happens in the second or third of the games. So, just nothing special. I really don't want to watch this film again. It's just not good. Number six goes to Amazing Spider-Man 2. This one is actually ranked pretty high on this list. I'm surprised it didn't really make the bad list when it came to like put all the numbers together. And it's actually still kind of ranked this high in this top ten. But for me, it's it has the Batman and Robin curse. Too many storylines shoved into one movie. And it's... A lot of storylines are unfinished, there's a lot of unanswered questions, there's scenes from the trailer that are not in this film that are actually separate scenes that have been released to the public on YouTube, but they're not on the uh, deleted scenes on the disc when this film first came out. So, there's too much going on, not enough on the story, a lot of unanswered questions. And just, it's a clubbered fucking mess. Number five goes to Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. 
It's not as bad as Genesis. It's a really boring copy and paste of Terminator 2. It's nothing special. Number four goes to Spider-Man 3. Now, I'm a little confused about my numbers here. I probably mixed them up some, somewhere down the line, but this is just where it landed. Uh, Spider-Man 3 has the same problems as Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I was actually able to find a way to make Spider-Man 3 work by splitting out the plot line of this film into three different movies. If you go check out my Spider-Man 3 review, the link will be in the description box down below. You can see how I was able to fix the, this uh, film by making it into its own trilogy. To me, it's, it's, it's a bit more bearable to watch than Amazing Spider-Man 2, but it's also really nothing special as well. Number three goes to Morbius. That's another new film that we reviewed this year that came out in theaters. I kind of feel like it had the same effect on me as Uncharted did, except I don't know the, the mythos and the, uh, the backstory more of Morbius because I didn't really read up on his backstory beforehand. It's just, I feel like this film could have delivered so much more and it could have been a little bit more entertaining on some aspects. Else, I feel like some tweaks on the script would have made it a little bit better. But it's just, it's not, not, it's nothing, it's really nothing special. Like, a lot of these films, the main really reason of these films on this list is just, it's nothing really special. It's just, it didn't really connect with me. This one had a really hard time connecting with me because it just, it... It just kind of sat in the middle. Number two was probably one of the biggest disappointments on this list, and that would be Pandorum. Now, Pandorum, I actually still really like this film. I really, 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 really do like Pandorum. The problem with Pandorum is the amount of advertisement this film had, had had, which was very little. The story of it seems a little bit cluttered. And it kind of feel like since this, this this was the first time I've seen this film since 2015, it didn't really age that well. So this is kind of a film where I kind of just want to leave alone for the rest of my life and just remember the good uh, thoughts, images, and all the memories I had with the film the first two years I saw it back in 2014 and 2015 because I feel like if I watch it again, it's going to go into the bad list, so that's mainly the reason why Pandorum is on this one, because I kind of feel like it started slipping into the, it's not really anything special, but it still has a special spot in my heart for how good it is, in my opinion. I just, I feel like that it's on a downward spiral of just not aging properly like it should. Number one should be quite obvious. It's probably one of the very few films that I reviewed this year that I don't really know what to do with. Because the special edition, not the theatrical edition, the special edition makes me hate the first half of this film, but I actually enjoy the second half of the film but it basically counteracts with each other to where this film just, I don't know what to do with it. It sets in the middle of my ranking scale as a 5 out of 10. It has ever since the first time I watched it, and that is Alien 3. This is the second time I've talked about an Alien film in these top 10s. This one does not have the same problems as Alien Resurrection as it is not on the top 10 bad list. It's just, I wouldn't say per se it's boring, but there's just a lot going on that you don't really know how to place because the first half of this film is completely god awful and then once you reach to the halfway point and it gets more intense of them trying to stop and catch the xenomorph it gets a little bit more entertaining i feel like the second half of this film had more heart and effort put into it and there's more like just power driven into the story and that's where all the heart and soul is it's the second half of the film and it's hard to get through the first half of the film if I want to get to the second half. So that's kind of why I just leave it on the shelf and just kind of leave it be because I don't know what to do with it. So that is my top 10 films that didn't really quite hit the mark or the meh. And that's just a lot of these films is just they weren't really that special they just didn't really leave a mark on me and they may just sit on the shelf for the rest of their life this is Mike Check 95 signing out